Good morning, everybody. We are uh, out here in God's creation this morning and doing one of our hobbies, trying to clean up a little bit for the South Carolina 2021 deer season. I um, wanted to bring something to y'all today. We've been messing with this for about two or three years, trying to figure out a way to bow hunt in South Carolina. Several problems we've, we've tried to solve with this. A bunch of times we get flood and rain, tropical storms in the wintertime, and our humidity is so high. Also, when you put corn on the dirt, it molds. We like to run shell corn, and it's legal in South Carolina. But we worked on this system trying to trying to figure out a way to save time, not have to put corn on the dirt every week, and um, really just try to be more efficient with our hunting, where we don't have to come in and out our bow stands and. You know, it just overall it works out great for us because we don't have to bait up but every two or three weeks. But what I want to show you today is a, is a good use for an old drum. If you got an old metal drum or plastic drum laying around, you can even do it with a five gallon bucket if you wanted to. But we came up with a system the other year, um, ran into the 55 gallon drum, got them for nothing, so that's even better. But uh, basically what we did, and I'll, I'll put some pictures in it and go around it at the end of the video, but what I wanted to show you is the is, is how high it is off the ground. Sometimes we get floods here and it's two foot off the, you know, the water rise up two foot. So that keeps our corn out of the dirt and it keeps it from flooding out in the woods. But it also makes everything come to this feeder. You're gonna get birds, you're gonna get squirrels, you're gonna get coons, you're gonna get a little bit of everything, but that's, you know, it's a feeding station is what it is basically. But what we did was we took this 55 gallon drum and we cut legs. This, these happen to be unistrut that we had left over from, from some electrical jobs, but you can use angle iron also. If you use angle iron, just punch your holes in the angle iron before you shoot it into the drum and use regular sheet metal screws, not self-tapping because they'll, they'll definitely wall it out with the other. Um, several advantages of this drum is we've got a bung in the top. The top's covered and it's got a bung hole in it. And we actually take, um, I'll step right here and show it to you. We actually take a two inch MA, a short piece of pipe and a two to four adapter. And what we actually do is take this bung off and screw it in. And then you can pour your corn in and close it back up. You don't get any more through the top of the drum. In the bottom of the drum, we actually drilled about 10 or 12 holes with an eighth inch bit. To, if we got any moisture in it, that it would drain out the bottom and keep our corn from molding. But we cut two slits in the side. We actually drilled a hole right here and took the saws off and ran about 10 or 12 inches. And that kept us you know, give us a good hold. As I was saying right here with the hole, we actually drilled the hole right here, or actually on this side, and then we just took the sawzall and slid it back. Well, with the drum laying on the side, you can take the hammer and fold it back in. So basically it's a gravity feeder, and you know, that's one of the features that we did on this. So every once in a while we'll get water in here and that'll cause you know a little bit of molding problems as you can see a little bit left over in there after the season last year but it's not a big deal um if you're concerned about that we have got some drums that don't have tops on them so what we do is take plywood and put across the top and that kind of shields the water off of it another thing that we're, we're using these feeders if you put them out in the middle of nowhere you've got to um it'll take deer a long time to get accustomed to them but what we usually do is take them and, tie, and strap them to a tree. And when you do that, it kind of makes it a little bit more natural. And also on the other side of that drum, we do another one. We actually have two. And the reason for that is it's more balanced. Um, you don't have as many deer fighting on the corn. They come in and eat and eat their belly full and leave and more come in. But the second advantage is actually behind us, you can see it there, we actually have a ground blind as a bow stand. So what we do is we actually turn both of those slits straight away from us. And the reason being is when the deer comes in, he comes into the side on either side and we have a good broadside ethical shot. Makes a big difference with, with I've tried it both ways and, and most of the time when the deer comes in, he'll crook a little bit one way or the other, but it's always a good shot, a good hard, you know, good straight broadside shot on the deer. But that's what we're dealing with. Um, I'm actually going to put a little bit of corn in this one because we're early. But I, you know, both season actually opens in a couple of days. But I want to get a little bit of inventory a little bit early. But um, we're going to do that right now. Put some corn in it, and I'll show y'all how that's done.
basically what we do is we drive up the four wheeler beside it, make it easier on us. We've got the bung out the top. So all we have to do is screw that in there and open it back. Put one. Makes it a little bit easier on your back. And all we gotta do is take it right back out. Put our bung back in to keep from getting water in our drum and we are good. We actually put about 100 pounds in this one just for a run. I don't normally like to fill them up the first round. Um, usually after about the first September when they really get out the fields and the corn's cut, they start coming in a little heavier and that's when we do a little heavier baiting.